And what is going on with eating? So if you have one meal and say this meal comprises uh, you know, 2,000 calories or whatever, and you have this meal at 6 p.m. and you fast for 24 hours until you eat again at 6 p.m., if you have this one meal a day, why is it better to do that than to have, say, you know, smaller meals of like 500 calories multiple times per day, little snacks? Well, because going back six million years back, you know, we're in the trees and then in the savanna, our bodies were designed, well, or evolved to respond to adversity. And we've removed that from our lives because it feels good. But we need adversity to be resilient and to fight disease. So what I'm saying is that period of hunger, and it's not even hunger these days. I don't even feel it. I feel great if, if I don't eat. And it, it takes a few weeks. So anyone wants to start, make, give it some time, give it a couple of weeks. But what's happening in the body is you're turning on these adversity hormesis response genes. We call them longevity genes. And they make the body fight aging and diseases. And so by... By eating through the day, the traditional, oh, you got to have breakfast, best meal of the day, blah, blah, blah. Um, first of all, it's not true that you need to be full or fed to think clearly. It's, it's very clear that people who are fasting have as good, if not better, mental acuity. Okay, that's one. So I think that that needs to be thrown out the window. Kids are different. We're not talking about kids. We're talking about adults. And we're not talking about malnutrition or starvation too, let's be clear. But we are talking about lengthening that window of not eating. So if you always are, are satiated, fed, your body says, hey, I've just killed an, you know, a mammoth. No problem. Don't need to worry about survival. I'm just going to go forth and multiply and screw my long-term survival. Mm. So this is all about long-term survival by making the body freak out that there's tough times. And that's running away, like running away from a cat, like the savanna, and being hungry. Or... It, you know, there's molecular reasons that all, all this works, but you know, trust me that the the data is very clear that this is the way to go if you want to be healthy in your 80s and 90s. Well, it, it it actually does make sense when you put it in that way that your body, when you're fed, relaxes, and so if you're just doing that all day long, and I know for a fact that when I am um, not fed and I go and do things, whether it's perform, one of the things that I've been doing um, is I don't eat before shows like I take many uh, many hours before a comedy show and I used to just like eat whenever I just eat and, and then I would do shows and I would have a, a meal like an hour before the show and I'm really trying to wake up I'm really trying to come on come on come on but I've now recognized actually I saw a video where Cat Williams was talking about this do you know Cat Williams is hilarious comedian uh, I do know. Well, you're slipping if you don't. Uh, he's he's hilarious. When he was doing this interview and he was saying, they were saying, what's your process before a show? And one of the things is I don't eat. I make sure I don't eat. And I was like, that's wise. That's really smart. And I'm like, I needed to hear that even though I kind of knew it, but I'd never written it down. I'd never like associated it absolutely. But now I have. Like now I do not eat before shows. I won't do it unless I know I have three hours.